Hi, everyone. This is Caroline with the Expat Interviews Thriving Abroad, where we give you an opportunity to meet expats all over this huge globe, people that are doing amazing and extraordinary things. And uh, some of the issues that expats face is one of the topics or some of the topics that I would like to, to expand our audience and expand our reach and, and talk about something really important today, uh, something that affects probably more women than it does men, uh, only because we are the ones that um, have to make the major decisions sometimes, it's left up to us. The pandemic has left us with so much uncertainty in our life, rapid change, things are changing by the minute. We feel overwhelmed 90% of the time. So I am so excited to bring you someone who can help bring a little bit of, of peace and, and calm and strategy on how to overcome these issues. Thank you so much, Coach Adriana Meyer for, for joining me today. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you very much for the amazing invitation. I'm very honored to be here with you and your beautiful audience. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I love uh, uh, the fact that you also are an expat uh, yourself. You're originally from Brazil. Yes, <laughs> Could you I am. Tell us a little bit about your, your expat journey. Yes, sure. I'll be happy to, to share my journey with you. So um, a few years back, uh, the company that myself and my husband worked for, uh, it collapsed uh, and it ceased, uh, leaving us with no other alternatives uh, other than moving abroad and starting a new journey, a new career uh, overseas. Uh, at that time, I didn't move with my husband because it was not the, uh, the place I really wanted to be as a family. Uh, we have a son at the time, uh, our son was seven and uh, it was not the best place. One year after uh, going and coming and uh, back and forth, after travels, after just seeing each other for quite uh, a short period of time, just for a few days, we decided to move uh, to an Arab country. So we had the opportunity of living in Dubai. So we moved as a family and we stayed there for 10 years. And I might confess it was not a very, a very easy, um, uh, uh, how can I say? Transition. Thing to do, yes, thing to do and transition as you said, because it was my first time moving abroad and living as an expatriate. So as you said, I had to do the sacrifice. I had to leave my career, my life and my work behind to support my husband's journey. And to start in a new country where you need to follow the culture, uh, the local laws, the costumes, um, the Sometimes idiom to me was not an issue because luckily they speak English in Dubai <laughs> as it's very multicultural. But uh, all those things, they impact someone, uh, the wife that is moving abroad. Not to mention Caroline, uh, the fact that I also had to support my son adjusting into that new reality. Um, so that's the first impact, the first scenario when you move abroad as an expat, and that was my, my reality. Uh, I saw myself without my network of support, without my family, without my friends, and that was hard for me. When my husband and my son were adapted and adjusted, I started my own adjustment. And I remember that was... Uh, around six months after that I had the chance to be fully uh, inserted and adjusted into that new culture. And, and I feel like that is quite uh, an adjustment going from, uh, you know, from a place like Brazil, which is so, uh, it, it's a different vibe, a, a totally different culture, yes. more laid back, more free. And then you mm -hmm. go to a more <laughs> sophisticated uh, place like Dubai. So I, I could see that, that, that change. Um, 
what are Absolutely. some of the some of the 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 things that women especially should uh, emotionally think about before making you know this big transition? Thanks for this question. This is a very good question, and this is something that impacted my life positively when I kept on moving after my first experience. So after living in Dubai for almost 10 years, we relocated to Portugal, to Lisbon, and we, we started a new journey here. We speak the same language, we have more or less the same, you know, costumes and everything and habits and uh, 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 the ways of living. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I still struggled a little bit because I didn't do my homework very well <laughs> at that time. I thought that just for the similarities and for being so easy to adapt here, I forgot that some things like uh, you are part of a culture that is similar to yours, but it's not your own culture. So this makes the total difference. And when you come with a mindset like that, you will find uh, better opportunities. You will find a better uh, adjustment because you will not create uh, uh, anticipated expectations. So the best advice I could give to women that are um, in this situation that are moving or thinking of moving abroad uh, as an expatriate, don't create expectations because visiting the place and enjoying and uh, knowing the place is one thing, but when you move, when you leave there, the reality is absolutely different. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I wish that I could say this over and over and over again. So many people do not understand, you know, and, and I get it. We come from cultures sometimes that, you know, we are just so accustomed to doing things the way that we do them. And then we show up and it's like, wait a minute, you in the new country have to do things the way that I do them, you know, and, and it's so hard for us sometimes to make. And, and it's very interesting that you mentioned, Indeed. you know, even going to a country where the language is similar, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I, I know personally that uh, it is different. The, the Brazilian Portuguese is different from the Portuguese in Portugal. So even those subtle things may, and there might be some people in Portugal that said, oh, well, you, you don't really speak Portuguese, you speak Brazilian <laughs> Portuguese. So even those subtle things, you know, maybe things so that true. you really have to, to get accustomed to. Um, when you're, you're so traveling true. with children, um, are there I mean, other, I know there are other elements to it, but what are some little things that we can do to help our children adjust also? Yeah, this is one of the things that I've done uh, from my own experience based on my own journey, but also from the work I've been doing with expatriate women as a coach for expats. So uh, I would say, just talk to your children before you move. Start finding common things and uh, things that are interesting for them. Uh, try to also be very uh, frank and honest to them. So allow them to explore the growth mindset and understand that embracing the challenge, embracing the new journey is not going to be easy. You empathize with them, you hear, you feel their sorrows, all the expectations, but at the same time, open the space for them to explore new things, uh, to meet new people and to try because life nowadays is so broad. <laughs> and uh, with the pandemic, as you said, uh, we understood that it's much more than, you know, living on a repetitive uh, a routine or doing things that we are only used to doing our comfort zone. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what you do in the expat uh, space with your coaching. How do you help uh, uh, women, especially? How do you help them uh, with what you do? What we do is generally find that space that uh, safe space for these women to be and to understand the uh, 
all the, the move before they move. So I always play that uh, and say, I have uh, some sayings and uh, I a joke uh, with my clients that as the relocation company will take care of your belongings with your uh, clothes, your things, your uh, anything that is dear Material. to you material absolutely and um, and uh, the resources you have there i'm going to support you emotionally i'm going to take care of all your internal resources and everything so you can flourish in the new country so you can adjust better and it doesn't mean you're not going to face the challenges the obstacles or you're not going to feel you know uh feel lonely sometimes you're not going to feel you don't belong to that country but it's just a way of understanding what are the options what are the things you can do before you move during your move and after you're relocating do you offer workshops uh personal one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching how can um people connect with you Yes, thanks for, for also um, highlighting these, because it's not only at the individual level that we can do the coaching sessions, but we can do that as a group or teams. So I generally offer all the workshops, webinars, and also the sessions, uh, especially for those relocating and some, some companies that I work with, they offer this program for expats to support the wives of those uh, workers that are relocating, because mainly the, the men are the ones uh, providing and uh, being the breadwinners <laughs> and bringing the wives with them and starting a new journey. So most of the times as well, uh, these companies are able to support the families of those workers, of the collaborators. And when this happens, it's an amazing journey and easier for everyone relocating. Sure. And yep. That's important and when Caroline, you work with your husband. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I would like to add something that when I moved, uh, after I, I came to Portugal, uh, I relocated to Qatar. So I was back to the Arab world. And uh, I've been living there now, but currently I'm in Portugal on holidays. But one of the things I did when I relocated to Qatar, I decided to create a new initiative for women that are expats and entrepreneurs. Because what we also witness and see from the testimonials and from the feedback of these amazing women is that most of the time they can't conciliate their family time with their career or profession. So entrepreneurship is being an amazing opportunity for these women that are expats and cannot find in the normal nine to five job a way out. So. I've created a group. Uh, it was initially a closed group, but after the pandemic, it was launched online. And it's an international platform for women to network, connect, collaborate, and showcase their businesses, their services. And it's called Expats and Entrepreneurs. So this is our safe space for you that uh, are feeling uh, uh, that you're not in the place yet, you're not adjusted yet, or if you can't find a way out. I invite you to join, Caroline. <laughs> I'm going to. It's called Expats and Entrepreneurs. And how do we yes. access this, this uh, space? Yes, yeah, so you can find us on all of the social media. We are on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And uh, we also have our website. It's www.expats. And the end is the Y, uh, entrepreneurs. But in the website is, you really write end, uh, entrepreneurs.com. So I will repeat. It's www.expatsandentrepreneurs.com. I'm going to put a link <laughs> below the video. So Beautiful. that'll make it easier yeah, for Yeah, that's what we'll find. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I am very excited that uh, mm -hmm. there exists help because this is so important. And, and one thing that you mentioned before closing is entrepreneurship. I feel like 
you know, the, the positive thing that we have gotten from this pandemic is the fact that more and more people, not just women, are looking to become entrepreneurs. And really, Adrian, I'm sure you agree that that's the future. It, you know, becoming yes. an expat entrepreneurship is, is it's the way to go. Um, Absolutely. It, there, I, I can't think of anything uh, <clears throat> that's going to really help our lives, you know, moving forward than just doing our own thing and, and getting the satisfaction from just being you and being able to be you and, and do what you do best. So thank you so much, uh, Coach, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to, to talk with us today. And I'm going to make sure that we put all of your information on, on our video so that others can reach out. And I am going to be joining your expats and entrepreneur group. I feel like it's super important and I invite everyone to please do the same. Uh, we need all the help we can get. You never can get enough help. And then hopefully uh, there will be people that reach out to you on a personal level that feel that they, they need to connect with you personally. Um, before we go, any, any last words of advice for someone who is considering moving abroad and they feel a little bit lost and confused? Just one little piece of advice. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for your beautiful initiative because uh, by uh, having access to work like yours and through your work, through your beautiful initiative, we are able to support more and more women. And uh, my last advice, if I could say something very useful from my own experience, I could share that what I did um, when I moved here uh, to Qatar, uh, the country I'm living now. So I didn't really create the expectations, as I said. I tried to research everything about the country. So from school for my kids to, you know, places where I could work or I could start connecting. And the most valuable one become part of a networking platform that undoubtedly will be your starter point to connect with the local people where you will feel embraced, you will feel supported, you will feel that the initial steps are easier when you have someone that care for you. So that's my, <laughs> I love my it. personal it's, advice. It's great advice and so important. Coach Adriana, thank you so much. And uh, we look you. forward to, to reaching out to you and becoming a part of your wonderful network of, of helping and sharing for us women expats out in the expat world. Thank you again. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Thank you so much. And let's stay connected and support each other. For sure. Sending love. Bye-bye. <laughs>